There are a lot of exciting effects to choose from inside Resolume, but in this video, I'm going to show you five useful effects that you've probably overlooked. I use these five effects in pretty much every show that I do, but they're not the most noticeable or flashy effects in the list, so you might have skipped right over them. But stick around. I think you might be surprised by some of these. Let's talk about our first underrated but useful effect, Auto Mask. Auto Mask is a simple effect that removes the background from a clip. By default, it uses the luminance of the clip and this threshold slider to remove the dark areas from the clip. You can reverse that and remove the light areas instead by clicking this invert checkbox or you can choose from this drop down a single color channel and I believe it uses the luminance values of that single color channel as the mask instead. I use auto mask all the time for getting transparency into clips that weren't delivered with alpha, especially things like logo clips. The next one I want to talk about is especially useful for projector gigs when you're battling a lot of ambient light or just when you need to fine tune some content that might be looking too bright or too dark on the screen. Brightness and contrast is another simple effect that's got two sliders, brightness and, you guessed it, contrast. We'll use this clip as an example. It's not working well because the black levels of this are a little bit lifted and gray and the green is a bit muted it's not really popping out on screen like i'd like it to by bumping up the contrast and reducing the brightness a little bit we're able to pull down those blacks to true black and make the lines more vibrant and stand out more on screen so i think this is going to work a lot better Next up is crop, which is used to crop out areas of your content that you don't want without having to go into Photoshop or another external program. I use it for these emergency message announcement graphics that are for some reason delivered with a border that has the file name. It's also useful for cleaning up logos that have a tagline in them or images that have a watermark whatever it is you don't want to be included on screen it's pretty simple to use you just use these top bottom left and right sliders to crop in from the top bottom left and right pro tip put the crop effect before the transform that way it will crop in from the edge of the content instead of those values calculating from the edge of the composition. This can be useful if those don't match and it allows you to then scale, move, rotate, do whatever you need to do to that cropped piece of content after cropping instead of moving it around within a cropped layer. I've just found that that works a little bit better. Moving on to number four, we're gonna talk about solid color. Now, this might seem like it just makes a solid color but in reality so many effects are actually solid color with a blend mode an obvious use case is to make your own strobes just pick a color animate the opacity and now you've got a lot more options than the strobe effect because you can make this BPM synced, you can have control over the envelope shapes, and you can experiment with different blend modes. It's also a simple way to have easy full blackout button or full white for the inevitable post set family photo. But there are a bunch of other effects you can recreate using solid color. For example, colorize. Solid color set to multiply. Invert RGB is a solid color set to difference. And add and subtract is a solid color set to add and subtract. Solid color is a very simple but versatile effect. Experiment with it, see what you can recreate or possibly even improve upon. Lastly, we're gonna talk about one that you might not have even known is actually an effect. And that is transform. 
Obviously, we all use transform to move and scale content within our composition, but it's a really powerful effect. If you untwirl all of these options, you'll see that there are separate scale options, a few different rotation axes, and you can adjust the anchor point. By adjusting these parameters and adding automation, Transform is actually a pretty powerful animation tool that can be used on its own to animate still images or video content, or works great in tandem with other effects to get some really cool results. Let's look at a couple examples. Rotating along Y, negative 90 to 90, has a nice never backwards spin rotation effect. Animating scale can have a nice like beat pulse vibe to it. Pulling the anchor point down to the bottom and animating the X rotation has this cool falling 3D plane effect. We can also stack it with other effects like a cloner or with feedback. So scroll it, bump it, spin it, flip it, stack it, whatever you do with transform, sure it's gonna be cool. So I'd like to know, what is your favorite, useful, possibly underrated effect? Drop it in the comments below. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and of course, come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching, peace.